Hi, everybody. It's Ryan here at uh, Pi Records. I'm here with Jay Hawk from the Infirmities uh, from Salinas, California, a place I used to call home, and uh, KSBW, where we both worked at, at probably the same time, but we uh, we didn't know it. Uh, how you doing, Jay? Yeah. I'm doing great, man. Yeah, um, I was a uh, I did graphic design for the news there. And then I was a cameraman when they shot the news. So we might just miss each other, you know, because they shoot it at different times. And yeah, who I, was, knows? I was early morning. Mm -hmm. Early early morning uh, director. Awesome. So uh, tell me about the infirmities, man. How did you guys get together and how would you describe yourselves? Um, well, we're, we're Selena Street Punk. It's just kind of a... The quick, uh, the quick name that I came up for, the quick description, I should say, of our music based out of Salinas, California. Um, but we're really a combination of, uh, I mean, old school thrash, Reagan era hardcore, um, probably early 90s street punk. Um, just got a little bit of in there, it's just a blend. We wanted to create a band that in 30 minutes, um, you felt like you were, getting into like a punk rock time machine and and you got a little bit of everything in half yeah. an hour so yeah <laughs> I, I i like i like the fast stuff and uh it's definitely it's definitely uh it's up there <laughs> yeah yeah and um, it's fun you know the idea is to keep keep people in the circle pit you know what i mean like once it gets yeah. going you want to have like a non-stop 30 minute experience where the kids come in, they don't get out and they just keep going, you know? So that was the whole idea. Yeah. So, uh, so Monterey ha has a pretty, pretty big punk rock scene. Um, they used to have the Lost Dry Heavers. Are they still around? Um, Lost Dry Heavers are, are friends of ours. Uh, I know Felix and Eddie and and all of them, I uh, grew up with them. They used to be in um, another band called Stub out of King City. And we had, that was uh, Small Town Ugly Bastards is what that stood for. And uh, <laughs> uh, Los Dry Heavers came after that. They actually, they were a band for a good 10 years. Um, and then after 10 years, they decided just to, uh, uh, they're, they're still, they, they, they're still a band. And I mean, they still play shows every now and then. I just put it that way. Um, like. I'd say maybe once a year they'll get together just for fun and they'll have a show like in Santa Cruz or something um, or to raise money for charities and stuff like that. Um, but as far as being an active band, like after 10 years, they decided, you know, there's other things they need to do in life. <laughs> so, yeah. And that happens when you're touring a lot, you know. Just, yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of touring, how have your tours been uh, before quarantine? You, you, were, you were playing out a ton. Yeah, um, we're a pretty active band. Uh, try to make sure that every single month we had shows to, to, to go and play. Um, Los Angeles is, is very much a common spot where we would play our gigs. Um, we pretty much, we worked really hard to, um, you know, I, I figured out in the beginning the only way that we were going to make a name for ourselves was just to keep touring and to keep playing lots and lots of shows. So um, on average, we were playing seven to eight shows a month sometimes. You know, I'd stay in Los Angeles for a week and we'd play every day, all week long. We'd, we'd have a show in different parts of LA. Wow. LA is big enough where you can do that. I mean, you can go for one yeah. section of LA and and go to another sec, be in different clubs every night if you want, you know, if, if you do it right. And um, um, yeah. So yeah, we stay pretty active. Uh, mostly, mostly, mostly California, but we also performed in um, Austin, Texas. We did two, two uh, overseas tours, two European tours, doing England, Germany, France, Belgium. Um, played some big festivals in the UK, um, and we're trying to work on doing some on the East Coast. That's definitely in the plans. That's something we want to do in the future so that'd be cool um so how uh, i want to think of the words 
you have a strong connection to the bad brains. It's pre it's pretty obvious. Um, positive mental attitude. When I see your posts on Facebook, it's all something positive. Community, togetherness. Uh, tell me about your your ethics behind your band. Um, well, we're pretty much a, a positive punk rock band. You know, I believe very much in uh, bad brains. There, there's a, there's a real connection there. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, just in general, growing up, listening to punk rock music uh, since I was like 11, um, I could say a lot of it, you know, when you're, when you're first getting into it, when you're really young, there's a lot of teenage angst, a lot of, uh, you know, it gets you going. You know, you hear something in there and it's like, man, I want to be a part of that. That's me. Um, there wasn't too many punk rock bands I found that had a positive message uh, when I was younger. You're looking back, you're not necessarily looking for that, but then at the same time, there's not a whole lot of options in general. I mean, when I look back, I think Bad Brains is one where you look at the lyrics and, you know, as hardcore and as fast as they were and people loved them, you know, their message was on uh, God's love and unity and stuff like that and people um same thing for minor threat you know you have a really fast strong force um yet they're singing about straight edge about the straight edge movement and about not doing drugs so um the thing with infirmities i spent a lot of my life in in regular punk rock bands that talked about same type of thing you know anti this anti that I spent a lot of years i guess being angry like 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 most punk rockers do. And a lot of people never really change from that, that mindset, you know. Um, I had a lot of life changing uh, experiences in my life that helped me pretty much reevaluate my life. And um, I decided that if I was ever going to come back and do punk rock, that it was going to be positive. I wanted, I wanted to I have a band that stood for something different, not not the same thing I had already done for like 15 years. Um, I did, I did about 15 years of, of, uh, your typical pump rock message. And when I had a life changing event, uh, I came back two years later with a whole new message, different mindset. And, um, that's really what infirmary is about. It's about, I believe a lot in second chances. I believe a lot about forgiveness. I believe a lot about unity uh, with everybody in that circle pit, you know, no matter, no matter what, uh, what background they come from, what race, what religion. Um, it's, a, it's like a one love experience. Um, bad brains talk about one love a lot. And my connection with bad brains has a lot to do with HR. Our, our first major tour was with HR, Bad Brains. And so I got to spend a lot of time with him one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know, we shared a tour van and um, pretty much every night, every morning we'd wake up, sip tea and talk about um, our experiences in life. So um, a lot of my influence is, is personal too. I think it became stronger after that tour with me and HR. Um, he calls me Joss son instead of Jason. Um, most people know me as Jayhawk, but <laughs> throughout the tour that was, I'd wake up in the morning and he'd be like, Joss son. And he'd like come and you know, we'd have tea together to give me a big hug and just a really loving person, great spirit to be around and um, just a great experience. Um, so yeah, pretty much. Um, I always think about the next generation of punk rock. I think, a lot of us get stuck either in what punk rock was before or how, how we grew up with it, how, how it was at the time, how it is now. But I'm always trying to think about the next generation of punk rock kids. Also because I'm a father too, because I, I, I have a daughter as well. So I'm always, I'm always thinking um, just to kind of plant a seed out there for the next generation. Awesome. Awesome. Um... So, you got any cool tour stories uh, to tell me about? <laughs> um, let's see. Um, 
Well, I could talk a little bit more about the HR one. That that was our first. Uh, we had been on other small tours, uh, like weekend runs, when we first started. Uh, we did some of those with like Total Chaos, uh, Union 13. Um, Edward from Union, we've been friends a long time, uh, like 20 some years. Um, Total Chaos, I've known Rob and Sean for many, many years too. All for me being in other punk rock bands, not really infirmities, but when I started this new project, you know, I had old friends that I could still connect with and be like, hey, I got this new project. Um, I'd like to hook up on some shows, do some tours. So uh, um, fortunately, I still had enough friends in the punk scene where that was, that worked out pretty good. You know, we, we got around pretty quick, even from the beginning. Um, so our, our, but our, one of, one of the most memorable times was with HR. Um, it was the first time we got one big van and, and both bands got to ride in, in one in one tour van. Um, it felt different than the other tours I was on because I think the other ones, it was like, um, there wasn't as much of a strong spiritual connection like there was with HR. When I hung out with HR, he was very quiet, very timid, but once you got him talking, it's like he had great stories to tell. I could ask him any questions. You know, I'd take him out to dinner and we'd go have like, um, he's vegetarian, but he eats fish. So we, we'd go have some dinner together and I'd ask him what it was like, you know, I asked him how he grew up, asked him what it was like where he lived now. Um, and anyway, I just got to know him and it felt very personal. I felt like hanging around with him, not only was it like a huge blessing to like sit and watch like Bruce Lee movies with him and <laughs> like we weren't touring. Like we'd we'd come home from dinner and we'd watch like the big boss from Bruce Lee uh -huh. and just like get back on the couch and and you know, it was just it was just fun. It was fun to hang out with them. Um we would pray together before shows. We'd wake up in the morning, sip on tea, because you know our our voices would be a little raspy from the night before playing all these shows back to back every night. And um, even that was nice, just sitting around getting to know him that way. Um, I'd ask him stories about his songs, some of his songs that we all know, and he'd tell me, you know, what what influenced him to write those songs at the time. Um, Attitude. Yeah. <laughs> Attitude. Yeah, exactly. And that, that was the name of our tour. We, we called that tour. Uh, we got that PMA uh, West Coast tour and it was infirmities and HR bad brains. We, we met, we, we got to play one show before we toured with HR. We, we played uh, two shows actually with HR. Uh, one was in Long Beach in a small bar that's no longer there. It's called the Blacklight District. And the other one was at Jerry's Pizza in Bakersfield. And there was two back-to-back -back nights. And first thing I did when, when, we, when I met HR is um, I walked into the bar area and I said, hey, I just want to say it's a, it's a real honor to, you know, share the stage with you. And, and I just want to let you know a little bit about what we sing about and what our message is. And uh, I wanted to tell you that because, you know, bad brains you, and even, in your own personal career as HR it was partially an influence for me wanting to do that you know it's it's it means a lot to just be on the same bill with you I had no idea months later we'd get the call to, to tour with him I mean we I thought it'd just be for one night <laughs> you know one night was enough you know I was I was, I was blessed just to have one night and um, had him sign the banner that's behind me that Bad Brains banner says to infirmities, human rights, thanks HR. Um, and that was from the first time we played together. And I thought that would be it. And then um, his drummer gave me a ring and said, um, you know, HR really likes you guys, thinks you guys are really down to earth. You know, none of you guys have any egos or anything like that. And he likes that about you guys and wants to know how you guys would feel about, you know, touring together and doing a tour together. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> I was, like not saying yes to that would be like, man, I just remember hanging up the phone and telling my wife, I, I got to go for a while. It's, just, uh, it's a big deal. <laughs> I mean, we could do a tour with HR. I called other guys in my band. They, they couldn't believe it. You know, it's like, what? We're doing a whole tour. So um, 
but yeah, it's just, it was a really special time. It still is. And even though we haven't done long tours with HR, that was in 2015 when we did that tour. Uh, he didn't come back to Los Angeles for, mm, i said maybe a good two years before he came back and did a couple shows. But anytime he's in LA, you know, we still don't get together and play shows. So the last time he was here, when he played at the Doll Hut in Anaheim, um, we played the All Ages show with him. And so we got to reconnect and hang out again and stuff. So I was pretty much hanging out with him in the back the whole time, just him and his wife, uh, Lori. And Lori was like, I had no idea you guys were like that close, like that much friends. She didn't realize it because uh, until the, until I actually met Lori and hung out with her and, and uh, we were just having a great time just hanging out back there. And he had me come up and sing a song with him that night. So that's awesome. So, yeah. That's been, that's been really cool too, is being able to um, uh, just to get to know him and become good friends and and be able to sing together some of those awesome reggae songs that um that they wrote you know back in the day yeah. so it's pretty cool to see the pictures that you post when you go from town to town there's always a group there's always a group everybody always has a smile on their face i mean it's good to see that togetherness in punk rock uh because online there's a lot of bickering and stuff like that but it's good to see the togetherness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're real. I mean, I'm real big on that. It's it's really about the brotherhood. Um, all of us, well, not all of us, but some of us uh, in the band. You know, we have families. A lot of us have been playing for a long time. Um, I do have, as you probably noticed from the photos, there's different band members here and there. Um, I have different lineups. Um, I'm always the one singing, but I have like a Northern California lineup and a SoCal lineup. So depending on where the shows are at, where the tours are at, um, I have what's called Infirmities Army. So it's not, it's not like a normal band per se, where say it's like the Fab Four, the same four guys that, that do the whole run. And because we have so many shows that it would be almost impossible <laughs> for for the same guys to pull all that and it's it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot of responsibility it's a lot of road time and a, you know at the end of the day people have jobs people have lives yeah. um outside of being in bands and as you get older you 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 definitely find that out uh pretty quickly <laughs> it's like, uh adulthood would fill up your time pretty quickly and so yeah. I, I knew that with infirmities, we, we were off to a great start from the beginning. And the only way I was going to be able to keep us active and to keep us touring was I was going to have to have more members that were going to learn all the material and are just ready to, to go, go tour. You know, whenever they get the call, it's like, can you do these dates? Yeah, I'm down. Let's go. And it made things a lot easier that way. So That's really interesting. I, I don't know if I've ever heard that before. <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of different i mean I've, I've talked to a lot of different bands and and um whenever i share that concept people are like man i never thought of that before but that's it makes a lot of sense you know like yeah because because you know because they're like i hate having to turn down a gig you know we get a call and really want to do it but, but one guy can't you know because of work or whatever and I said, well, yeah, that's, you know, you got to have like a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. You know, one guy can't do it, call up the next guy. Okay, you down? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. I mean, I, we would have never been able to stay as active as we have been for the past eight years if we, if we didn't have a system like that. Um, sure, there's some members that have been very consistent, like Harvey Rebellion. He was, he was our guitarist for three years solid, never missed a gig. He went, he said, I want to do it all. I said, you want to do it all? I said, be careful when you say all, because <laughs> that means we're going to be really tired. It's a lot of driving. And he's like, I understand. I want to do it. I said, okay. So he did. You know, we went three years straight. And then he took a break and stuff to come back here and there. But most of the time, I my whole thing, too, is I don't like to wear anybody out. It, it's not about... Um, 
it's easy to to burn yourself out on on constantly playing 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 um the road gets tiring you know and my whole thing is if if i could build a family of members which is really what we are and um basically be able to be flexible to people's schedules you know uh say my drummer says hey you know what i can't do that swinging others gig in in june can you give it to david david's like yeah man i'm down i'll do it uh you know the the flexibility on my side is great and it's great for them too because they don't feel bad calling me and saying hey i can't do that one because <laughs> they know somebody else can can take the spot and we're, and we're still going to be fine you know and I don't, I don't like putting any pressure on any of my guys. I think anybody who's been in infirmities, you can ask them uh, what it's been like. A lot of them will say that they like that flexibility. I kind of built a system that worked as far as, um, yeah, it, it, you know, you play when you can play, and that's fine, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I keep it flexible for people. Awesome. You know? So you, we have one of your one of your seven inches here at Pi Records. Uh, mm -hmm. But tell me about your releases. What do you have? Um, the one you have is, I believe, it's the Faith and the Fury. That one's yep. on uh, on Malt, Malt Soda Records. Uh, there's 500 copies of vinyl for that one that were that were pressed. Uh, one in red, white, blue, and black. Uh, I believe there was like. I don't know, like a hundred copies of each color. Um, the colors have gotten harder to find now. I don't. I don't think there's definitely more black. We. I think there was two hundred black printed, and then three hundred in assorted colors. So that would make sense. Why there's the most of the color ones are gone. <laughs> um, but besides that album, we have another EP that was released. It's called Paid in Blood. Um, that one has eight songs on it. Um, that one was only available through CD though. We never pressed it on vinyl. It's a little hard to find now. I would say we only made probably about a hundred of those. Um, it, it actually was the first, pretty much the first EP we released. However, it was not, um, the first recording. It was actually the second recording. <laughs> so a little bit backwards. That first EP that came out, um, it, it caught some attention and, but we had really been shopping around the recording of the other eight songs for a long time, which is the one that you have. And uh, when Malt Soda heard it, Scooter, Scooter Buell, how's it going? Shout out to Scooter. When Scooter heard that, he was like, man, we, we got to press this, you know, I'm, I'm very interested. And um, he called up Sammy Town from Fang and, Sammy vouched for us, said, yeah, you should totally sign these guys. I mean, these guys are very active. They play a lot of shows. They'll definitely sell records because they play a lot of shows. So just from the shows, you'll sell records. And um, uh, but, but the recording that you have is technically was our first real recording. And it's nice and raw. It was recorded in Los Angeles. And the, and, uh, the drummer from total chaos recorded our first uh ep the one you have and we had just got back from doing some shows with them in austin and uh he's like hey man come to my studio so rob came by during the recording um we cut it in one day everything all the vocals it's eight songs we came in the morning left left at night time and the whole thing was done it was like in and out and then um they took, up off, they took off to Europe after we finished that recording, so I wasn't able to get a mix of it till they came back. <laughs> so we were waiting around. Uh, it was like, man, when do you get back? Uh, but yeah, those two records really, Paid in Blood should have been released after The Faith and the Fury, but Paid in Blood is also hard to find. We've been thinking about repressing the uh, Paid in Blood because a lot of people don't have it and a lot of people want to have it. Uh, but we're also uh, working on recording a full length right now. Um, so that's that's in the works. Uh, but as far as what's out there, there's only two EPs, and both EPs have eight songs on them. So, that's awesome. so our songs are short. So. Yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, is, there, is there anything else you want to you want to mention or, or talk about before we sign off? Um, let's see. Well, um, I guess I could just share, I mean, just like everybody else going through what happened, you know, COVID-19, uh, we, we had other stuff planned for this year. We were supposed to be at punk rock bowling. Of course that got moved to next year. We were on a lot of different festivals that got moved to next year. <laughs> Um, but it's been a good time for us to write new songs. Uh, we've been working on new material. So that's something to look out for. Um, we've got a new song called Mass Defiance. We're working on, uh, partially based on what's happening right now. Uh, we're working on possibly a music video for that song as well. Um, so definitely in 2021, You'll definitely see some new music coming out from us. Um, awesome. Awesome. And probably a video. So, oh, yeah. that's, that's great. So, all right. Well, thank you, Jay. Uh, I appreciate your time and consideration. I love you guys. Uh, uh, it's, it, I, I, feel, I feel a connection because of the Salinas, the, the Salinas punk rock scene because. I really miss it there. Uh, I miss the whole area, all the little towns around it. And uh, the people were were very unique and kind and, and I really miss it there. Yeah, well, it's, it's a, you know, it's my hometown, born and raised here. People in LA tell me, oh, how come you don't move to LA? You know, you're here every weekend. Like, why don't you just move here? I said, well, you're something about going back to my hometown though. You know, it's like, you know, I was raised there. It's, it's what I know. It's, it's like, um, it's one thing to go to different cities and tour, but it's nothing like when you just come home and it's, yeah. it's just chill and it's relaxed, you know? And, yeah. and for me and for my family as well, um, I have a wife. My wife's name is Mariana. We've been married for 20 years and I have a seven year old daughter who also runs around the stage and sings with me and rocks out with me too. <laughs> So, you know, but it's nice to come home to that, you know, like simple life. You know what I mean? I yeah. Don't, um, um, I'm, but, I, but we love touring. We play all over the place. But I love my hometown. I love Salinas. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so I totally understand. I think it's awesome that, you know, that's how me and you really connected was, was yeah. talking about Salinas. How you were from here. And it was, that was super cool. Uh, I don't run into that all the time. Sometimes I get like, I was born in Salinas, but then I moved. Like, I get a lot of that for some reason. I run to people in LA like, yeah, I was born there. I'm like, did you ever live there? No. <laughs> so it's like, I get a lot of that. Like, I was born there, but I don't know much about Salinas. So. Um, but yeah, man, anytime if you ever pass through, man, hit me up. You know, hang out I'm, and stuff. I love got the best that. Mexican food, man. So. Oh, my <laughs> so, God. Is the taco shop still there in Seaside? Yeah, that's still there. That's still there. And then um, East Salinas, El Zacatecano is one of my favorites. Um, when I have friends that pass through here, I take them there. I got a friend in Vegas. Last time he was here, he's like, man, I miss that Mexican food from over there. <laughs> it's the best. Uh, we it's still best. have El Charito uh, burritos here. Oh, Everybody yeah. always gets burritos here, so... There was a uh, Super Pollo down down by the by the station, Super Pollo. Yeah, and they were like this big the the burritos. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We still got we still got Super Pollo. We got two of them actually, two locations. And uh, yeah, there's definitely. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of good food here. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But um, yeah. Anytime you're passing through, just let me know. I and. Uh, you know, you guys are always welcome to, to stay here and come hang out. You know what I mean? Um, I've never been down your way either. I know that's one area infirmities have not been that way yet. You um, love, um, you'd love but, Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's actually where HR, is, where HR lives right now. He's in Philly. So oh, I didn't know that. there's a good chance. Yeah, he's in Philly. So there's a good chance that, you know, eventually we're going to make it down that way. Uh, our guitarist who's playing with us now, his name's Talon. He's actually from, he's actually from that area. So he's talking about us 
doing a tour that way. He's got friends and connections out there. And we've got people who have been to our page for years. Wine has come to the East Coast and come to different areas. And um, we're about to hit Portland pretty soon. So Portland, Oregon. The Punk Fest this year got moved next year, but we'll be there next year. So, yeah, just working our way up there. So That's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for your time, Jay. And uh, I wish you guys all the best. Love and respect. And uh, I look forward to seeing your, your positive message and everything you guys do uh, in the future. And I wish you the best of luck. Oh, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for your time. Appreciate you. All right. Take care, buddy.